Hello, people, and welcome to another special edition of Trends in the Housing Market. It is I, Mike Martins, once again broadcasting out of Vancouver, BC, Canada, where the crisis is the most hurting. Anyways, I am here, uh, se second last day of October 2016, tomorrow's Halloween, and man, is the sun ever distracting me today. And today I am armed with my <coughs> fart machine. So whenever I, whenever I read an article that sounds like it's, yeah, I go ahead and hit the, hit the button. Anyways, let's get started here. I got lots of good, lots of good, lots of good tips here, lots of good stories. And I want to start with this one. This is a really good one. The great celebrity house price slump. Suddenly, stars can't shift their mansions. No matter how many millions they lop off the price. Wow. For those stuck in the, in the muddle of world of mortgages and rent, it's hard to feel sorry for them. But spare a thought for celebrities trying and failing to sell their homes. Palatial pads that would once have been snapped up within days are lingering on the market for months at a time, forcing sellers to slash their asking price. So why are the stars such as Ricky Ger Gervis and Jamie Oliver struggling to sell? So uh, they can blame the Chancellor George Osborne, who's increased the stump duty for high-end houses, which, which could add more than a million to the price in some cases. So they're adding... Um, an extra duty they call it sorry i got i got uh hung up there stump duty so it's an extra tariff i guess if you want to guess whose increase for high-end houses which could add more than a million onto the price in some cases for houses over 1.5 million the stump duty rate is 12 percent wow they're putting measures in place see that people putting measures in place and this is really 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 good article and I just wanted to start off with this one because even the celebrities can't even sell their homes. Let's continue here. I like this one. This is really good. This one goes out to Ontario. Why the Ontario housing market is rigged against millennials. I live in Vibra Toronto neighborhood just across from the university. It looks diverse, but all of us, all of the students, but it's really not. Middle class families were pushed out long ago. First to Scarborough, and to Mississauga, and to Ajax, then to Pickering, then to Newmarket, then to Barrie. Barrie, Ontario. But even in the, the hinterland, housing prices soared out of sight. A runoff with the three, with the, uh, to the mill three bedroom house in Ajax. A brutal commute to Toronto. Now goes for 600 large in Ajax. Goes for 600 large. I'm afraid I'll never be able to buy a first house. Should I jump now? This is a Globe and Mail. The high cost of housing and huge issue for young families. Population pressures, pre uh, uh, foreign investors, land shortages, and greedy developers. Okay, I'm going to have to call on land shortage. That's on land shortage, guys. Not on the article. Good article. But land shortage. Live in Canada. There's more land than you could ever imagine. Okay? Okay. Let's continue. Greedy developers usually get blamed. But there's other a culprit. Government. The affordability crisis in Greater Toronto is... Toronto is a direct result of provincial government policy. To put it bluntly, liberals at Queen's Park, the vast majority of whom already have nice houses, are shafting the millennials. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So, really good, really good, really good article. Wanted to share this with you guys. Let me know what you guys think about this one. But are the millennials getting shafted? I think they are, and this is a really good one. Let's go to... This is all over Canada, too. This one's a Canada one. Canada-wide. Chinese gangs and Canadian real estate. The odd correlation. RCMP, CSIS, analysts made some pretty bold claims in their 1997 uh, 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 Sidewinder report. The statement that Chinese triads are manipulating the real estate is one of the boldest back then. It seemed absurd that organized crime will focus on Canadian real estate. 20 years later, we wanted to take a look at just how crazy that seems now. Wow, 
we have the ability that to tap people's phones and open emails thanks to Harper. We do have metrics. TT. Uh, okay, that's what they're trying to say. Metrics of a ton of data. Shifting through this, there's pretty interesting correlation between the crackdown of triads, Macau casino revenues, Canadian real estate, and Canadian banking loopholes. That uh, Macau, they say Portuguese China. Thank you for that. And I just wanted to add this to you guys, but I have a follow-up story for this one later. But this is... Obviously, it is very... It's going to happen. Why? Wherever there's money, you could always follow the organized crime. It doesn't matter if it's in housing. It doesn't matter if it's in a, 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 a money laundering. It doesn't matter what it is. It, you follow the money. If there's money in broccoli, organized crime will be there with the broccoli. Believe me, okay? So this is a good uh, article. Too bad they didn't do nothing about it 20 years ago. Let's continue. Oh, yeah, yeah. I wanted to. I actually wanted to throw this one in, a special one in this one, because this is affecting a lot of people, okay? This is from London, okay? This is a good London story. London housing crisis hotspots attract most Airbnb guests. So, Airbnb, if you don't know what it is, it's like a um, an app for your phone where instead of renting out your property, you could actually uh, rent it out on a daily basis for for tourists so tourists come in oh the hotel's way too expensive let's stay in a furnished house so they go to airbnb airbnb will tell you where to go so what's happening is um the airbnb is at, uh, uh, affecting london so let's see here the most popular areas for airbnb guests visiting london are right in the heart of the housing crisis adding to the concerns about the impact site it is having on london's already stretched rental market Tower Helmets and Hanaki, top of the list, popular places to stay. With properties listed on the site, these brought and occupied 94 to 90% of the time, respectively, according to the survey of my property host. Visitors attract to East London for the same reasons that Londoners are. It's most affordable than other parts of London, according to the survey. The average, uh, the average nightly rate for accommodation for four people and the tower helmets is 151 pounds on Airbnb compared to the London average of 172 pounds. My property host managing director Elena Lopez says tower tower helmets and Hanaki consistently have the highest occupancy rates with the hosts there are able to let properties near every night they want to. So this suggests that there is a little risk of properties in the area sitting empty for long, with landlords able to charge hotel prices for properties for one night, night to night basis. This is little, uh, this is little, incivent to provide long term stable accommodation for residents. Many councils are worried about the Airbnb's higher cost short term rentals driving up rental costs and properties out of the long term rental market. So this is huge. This Airbnb thing is huge. So what's happening is people are buying up properties and airbnb them, and then people don't have um, a place to rent anymore. So this is, this is and this is London's east side. So this is the affordable area. So you see how this is, to me, this is... I like that one more for this. This one's suitable. Yeah, that, that one for sure. Let's keep going here. I like this one. See, this one you would consider a conspiracy theory when you think outside the box. Because anything, anybody that goes against the status quo is a conspiracy theorist, right? But no, I believe in this one. This one is the housing crisis uh, isn't at... This is in the UK, okay? The housing crisis isn't, isn't a crisis. It's a design project. Thank you. The UK's housing crisis is no accident but has been carefully orchestrated to become a catch-all excuse for self-serving projects, argues Pilamis Harper, Harper in the first opinion of the column of Dezins. The housing crisis isn't a crisis. Calling it inhibits effective action and, and plays into the hands of, the, of its creators to respond strategically to the crippling British homes shortage. We abolish the term housing crisis entirely 
and call it what it is, a design project. Thank you. For economic crisis to refugee crisis, a narrative of perpetual catastrophe is being deployed to divert attention from root causes, allowing flawed retrogressive proposals to be pushed upon panic public uh, thoughts, though cast unavoidable. Many of, many of our so-called crises are not consequences or unforeseeable catastrophic force, but it's a specific decision to take by well-informed individuals to meet their political financial goals. Crisis suggests a natural disaster, something beyond human control that serves nobody's interest. The housing crisis is none of these things. It's been carefully planned and orchestrated over several decades and now is delivering exactly the economic social conditions it would intend to, marking some people marking some people a lot of money in the process. Very true. Thank you. Dzine for posting this through uh through uh UK Guardian. Let's keep going. Got lots more to cover here. For my friends down under in Australia. Okay, guys. Hear me out here. This is a very important article. Why you should not buy a house right now. If you are if you are one of the growing number of Australians who thinks they will never be able to afford, listen up. Leading housing commentator and AMP's chief economist, Shane Oliver, has made a compelling argument as to why you should not buy a house right now. So sit back, relax, feel, feel reassured that the actual doing smart thinking by sticking to renting. A quick disclaimer, Mr. Oliver used au that is important to generous aisle when it comes to housing affordability. I'm not sure if you guys know who Oliver is, Mr. Oliver. And some parts of the of the country, Darwin, Perth, particular prices have reported uh, retreated back to where they were a decade ago. However, for the rest of Australia, particularly Sydney, Melbourne, and Brisbane, there are several reasons it is best to hold off getting onto the property ladder. Pay attention, people. Here it comes. Rest assured, house prices will come back down to earth. So will the price growth has been breaking records. It won't last forever. It's a base. Uh, it's basic economies, Mr. Oliver explains. If you look at the past cycle patterns in the house prices, periods of strength are often followed by periods of weakness. We have seen several times over and over again, or so, with the weakness around 2004, 2005, around 2008, 2009, and again 2011. Prices in Sydney fell an average of somewhat five to ten percent. So after, so this is what he quotes in saying. So after a huge run up. Uh, up the likelihood we would go through a period of weakness which then provided opportunities for buyers and then we could buy a, a much lower price at current at the current case so rents and getting rents are getting cheaper let me know comment below in australia if rents are getting cheaper part of the housing affordability issue is the cost of renting is a is major major in capital cities it also is it, it, it is impossible to save for a deposit while renting but rents are actually being uh, beginning to plateau in time which price growth is strong. So make, uh, so make staying in your rental property the better financial decision right now. This is tilting the question of favor renters. Wages grow so often that we are starting to see the increase in supply of apartments. Mr. Oliver Trow News AU. Is this true or is this a pack of... Let me know if this is if this if this is true down under. Are rents getting cheaper? And if you sit tight for a little while longer, if you sit tight for a while longer, you will get uh, eventually be afford to, uh, be able to afford to buy. Or is this a little bit of a ploy to maybe hold people back from basically rioting or 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 getting upset with their political officials? You know. So what upsets me is how housing has to go towards government now to start regulating housing it's sad housing used to be a municipal thing where people talk to each other sell between each other through a real estate agent as a middleman now the governments need to get involved this is disgusting let's continue here maybe if the governments uphold the laws of the country and the constitution they don't have to worry about 
about uh, people investing in countries that shouldn't be there. Anyways, let's go to... I got a really good one here. I got lots of them here, so I don't want to take up too much of your time. I like this one here. How do we fix Toronto's housing crisis? Experts weigh in. We asked six experts that will... Uh, what will it take to combat the ballooning social housing wellness and lack of affordable homes? So you know what's happening, guys. The 15% tax was added on here in Vancouver, so our sales have gone down almost to zero. Which is what it, they're selling, but they're not selling like like record numbers. Love last year to this year of October. I mean, it's a huge sharp decrease in sales. So what's happening is a lot of the foreign investors that have gone to Toronto and Seattle, so they're over there now. Um, uh, speculating in the markets and investing and buying up five, six hundred units per person. Anyways, let's continue. Toronto is in trouble when it comes to housing, says expert. Concern about the ballooning social housing awaits the lack of affordable homes. The city's 10-year goal of creating 10,000 affordable rental units and 3,000 affordable homes by 2020 is case of worry. They say because the end of the last year, Toronto was likely even halfway reaching either target to figure out how the city would do better politicians and experts concerned citizens would gather in regent park and toronto housing summit on friday ahead of the summit we will ask them what could be done to fix this crisis one of the most helpful housing solutions in two words more than land uh, more land already he says the city has found 15 sites of uh, valued land just worth over $100 million through the new Open Door program and f and frees up vacant lots, unused land, and private non-profit developers. All governments have land. All governments could come in. We need the province and the feds to do what, what we've done. So this is a really good article. I, I just wanted to, t to touch this because uh, Toronto's putting huge measures into place, but the thing is they're just going to keep feeding the bubble if they don't put massive measures where they could tax the foreigners like they do here, in, the foreign investors, sorry, like they do here in BC. Uh, I wanted to do this one. Um, I wanted to read this one from uh, from San Francisco. It's it's from California area. It's a really good one. Really, really good housing crisis. There's no housing crisis in America if you're a car. According to census data published of the National Association of Home Builders, 24% of houses completed in 2015 had a three-car garage. That's about 800 square feet of housing cars, bigger than most new apartments. I just, I wanted to throw this one out there. This is a good one. Meanwhile, Patrick Klong of Bloomberg notes that there are more three-car garages built in, built than one-bedroom apartments and every year expect, except 2005. The number of three-car garages have been climbing because since the Great Recession, builders have concentrating on more expensive homes since the rich only could buy them. A trend we covered earlier in America housing are getting bigger again because only the 1% are buying. As for young people to consult, told Clark. One of the interesting things we're finding that between uh, Uber and public transport, a lot of millennials are deciding that they don't need a car. So parking becomes less important issue. But we're also seeing that the multi-generational multi, multi housing with where the kids are taking care of elderly parents or have a new uh, grad moving home after college, and and now you have four cars where it might have been two before. Of course, three-car garages take up more space and need bigger lots with more frontage, meaning more, more sprawl, Crawl says the problem is. It's hard to escape the irony in the U.S., which will need something like 43 million new housing units to keep up with the population in the next 35 years, is using space to build apartment-sized garages. Even the trends of ride-sharing and self-driving cars cast measure uncertainty of American car culture. Very good article. I found that looking for uh, housing housing prices here. Oh. So let's touch back on the, the uh, organized crime. It was the article here that was sent to me, and I found that article. CSIS warns of Chinese influence. Actually, the other article was sent to me, so they're both sent to me. CSIS, CSIS warns of Chinese influence on Canada, Canadian real estate 20 years ago. 
Remember, the RCMP and CSIS accused the Chinese government of purchasing real estate in Canadian urban centers as a method of, th uh, of, of threatening Canada. No, it's because the recommendations of former classified program called Sidewinder was abandoned. Too bad they abandoned Sidewinder. All documents were destroyed and buried in 1997 by the liberal, liberal government. Turns out we are anxious to build ties with China than we are now, despite our national spy services advising government that... Well, this would happen to real estate. In a report titled, uh, titled Chinese Intelli Intelligence Services and Tryouts, Financial Links in Canada, RCMP, CISA's joint task alleged that Chinese government are using legal, legitimate business to gain control over economic le uh, levers of Canada. This is also to warn you that the... Canadian economy is concentrated in three or four large urban centers. Consequently, Canada is moving is is more vulnerable than any other country because of the many legislative loopholes governing the finance and uh, concentration of financial power in the in the hands of the few. So I wanted to throw this out there because you know we pay these intelligence services like CSIS and RCMP to do their jobs. They do their jobs, and they probably put in several million dollars of man hours tracking this and finding this and documenting this and what do they do they destroy all the documents so the people up top don't get uh do, nobody gets nobody gets how do you say um penalized for their actions i got one here it is uh an important one here this is a very important um article here this is a really good one i'm going to read it for you guys evicted probes the multiple dimensions of the housing crisis evicted poverty profit in the american city once bursting with well-paying jobs the brewing and manufacturing industries of milwaukee wisconsin is now the second poorest city in america you see that thriving beer beer city i've been to the beer city i saw those massive 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 um a breweries oh just the amount thousands and hundreds of thousands of people that worked there was beyond but it's all shut down now second poorest city in america over 170,000 people including 41 percent of the city's african-american 32 percent of the city's hispanic residents are living in poverty between 2009 and 2011 one in eight milwaukee residents were forced from their homes being evicted and foreclosed evicted uh, poverty and profit in America. City tells that there's their stories, written by Matthew Dem Demsund, now Harvard um, psychologist. The book follows eight families, black and white, who struggle to keep uh, the roof over their heads. The book is called um, Evicted, and it's 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 by Poverty and Profit in the American City. It's by Matthew Desmond. I really recommend Desmond. Desmond, I rec recommend you pick up the book, and it seems like it's a pretty good book. The reader, the reader, uh, meets Olren and two boys and Jory Jarfers after their rented house is condemned, an unfit for habitation. But the city, after several short stays in apartments across the inner city, she finds a duplex unit for five fifty a month, eighty eight percent of their welfare check. Desmond introduces us to other Black Milwaukeeans, uh, mostly women in their similar straits and recounts the stories of smaller number of poor residents facing eviction. People like Scott, young nurse, and the licensing overtaken this drug addiction. Very good book. I really wanted to put that out there because it's got a lot of potential. It is happening all over every major city. This is affecting everybody, and it's all linked to housing. What else do I got here? Oh, I got this one here. UK expert shrugs off foreign investment, blames, Canadian, blames Canada for Vancouver housing crisis. Scottish housing expert says Vancouver tendency to blame the other foreign owners is misplaced in the city's affordability crisis. What the hell are you talking about? Do you, do you, are you here? Do you see what's going on? Do you see the empty streets? Canada needs to stop blaming others for its affordability housing crisis to invest in more like to invest more in cities like Vancouver, according to the international expert. University of St. Andrews housing economist Duncan McLean. 
was speaking out and and uh, a rental market panel a part of the city's Vancouver ongoing addressing houses conference on Tuesday when Scott poked out poked a hole in common narrative the city's housing prices are reached are ratcheted up by offshore buyers yeah we put the tax. I'm not sure. Um, this was the other day. This was published, but uh, but um, Mr. Housing Expert from Scotland. I don't know if you've realized that the the sharp housing sales are gone. The increase in housing sales are gone. It doesn't take an analyst from Scotland with all this university to figure this out. And stop stop poking at. What are you out of your tree? What did you just wake up yesterday? We okay. We put the tax. Houses are not selling anymore. Okay, what does that tell you? The locals aren't buying it because this 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 isn't a local tax. This is fifteen percent on foreign investors. So you gotta, you know, maybe read the newspaper before you arrive here in Canada and try lecture people on housing. Anyways, this. This reserves a triple. And that's that. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching Trends in the Housing Market. Last week of October, last day of second last day of October, make sure you get the kitties out for trick-or-treating. And I wanted to share these stories with you guys. And, uh, you know, just hold on there, renters. Time was going to come. And keep saving your down payments. I know a lot of people are saving down payments. And if it don't work out, you know what? Move down to South Florida and buy a place free and clear. And this is Mike signing out for... Trends in the housing market. Thanks for watching. Bye.